Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And we're gonna go into the Gospel of Luke today, chapter 24. I wanna share verse 49 with you. And then let's talk just for a few minutes today about life in the Spirit. We read here these words of the Lord. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Now, you would think that the disciples would have been ready to go, ready to be launched on the mission of Jesus Christ, to share the gospel, to make disciples. You would think that they would have been fully ready to go at, at this very moment. They had seen, met, been with, been taught by the risen Savior. They had seen throughout His entire earthly ministry. They'd seen the miracles of Jesus. They had heard all of his amazing teaching with, with great authority. He's obviously speaking the Word of God. They had been under his teaching for three years. Uh, Jesus had, in these, these, these days after the resurrection and before his ascension, he had helped them to understand the Scriptures, given them the key to understanding the whole of the Word of God. That is, that it's all about him. It's all pointing to him. He is the fulfillment of all of the scriptures and so they they have the key to knowledge who is Jesus Christ and and uh, and you add to this the fact that they had actually already been out on mission Jesus had actually sent them out on on practice missions to to practice sharing the good news of the kingdom of God and then to come back and debrief and be instructed and and so on you would you would think that they would have been just ready to have been launched. And yet, Jesus says, I'm going to need you to wait. Stay in the city until you receive the Holy Spirit. Until I give you the gift that the Father promised, the gift of the Holy Spirit. You stay and you wait because then you will have power, he says, from heaven. And so what we understand then is that all of salvation from beginning to end is the work of God. It's not that Jesus says, okay, I've, I've accomplished salvation on the cross and now I'm turning it over to you. You guys have got this. I'm out. Good luck with it. Let me know how it goes. Uh, not, not at all. It is a work of God that we are involved in, that He calls us to. We are His vessels. We are His servants. We are His witnesses. But the Spirit does uh, does the work. The Holy Spirit, Jesus would tell us, would guide us and teach us and remind us and comfort us and, and uh, power miracles and convict of sin and convince about the gospel. This is all the work of the Holy Spirit through us. And I want to share with you from John 16, where uh, in verses 5 through 15, Jesus is really teaching out uh, the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He says, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate, now he's speaking of the Holy Spirit, you see, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sins and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever He receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever He receives from me. So the Spirit will give us this intimacy with God. He will remind us of uh, the words of Jesus. He, in fact, will, uh, will reveal Jesus to us and His will for us. Uh, in our lives, it is the Lord uh, who is who is Lord uh, even still, and is Lord over the church by the power and the working and the guiding uh, of the Holy Spirit. 
so the question then, I think uh, an essential question for believers is, uh, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you living by the Spirit? Jesus clearly desires for us to have this most amazing gift, a gift that is necessary if we're going to live the life that God has called us to um, and, and to live together uh, the, the work of ministry that the Lord's given us as the body uh, of Christ, the church. So if you would, hear this call from Galatians chapter 5. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And, it, and we'll, we'll skip down to the fruit of the Spirit. This now is in verse 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not be conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. This is life in the Spirit. So may we all yield to the Spirit, not living for our sinful desires, but living by the Spirit and knowing the very power of heaven in our lives. And may it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we get a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.